Uh, we see a lot of similarities between the hate for the Jews and the Hindus. There were people after me, I had death threats, I was asked to resign, people were saying Oxford is not ready for a Hindu president. In fact, if you put the facts in front of them, they'll ask you not to confuse them with facts. You know, I have been exposed to those ideas of Hamas as a resistance and right. not as a terror group. And if I didn't know better, if I didn't learn over the past three years, mm -hmm. I would have been one of those stupid kids really believing in all of these ideas of resistance and you know mm -hmm. liberation right. whilst it is pure terrorism and the people in Gaza and Judea and Samaria mm -hmm. have actually been weaponized. It is the most brilliant yet vicious social engineering ever done. It works on a system of incentivization and currently the incentives lie in glorifying you know Palestine, the you know the cause of Hamas, the cause of the Palestinian authorities mm -hmm. and whatever they're putting out. Even if Israel is doing well on the military side of it, the propaganda war is something that it lost. She is the first Indian woman to be elected as president at Oxford University Student Union. Hi, I'm Rashmi Samant and I'm the girl who fought the Hindu Forbes at Oxford. But what are you doing in Israel? Well, I'm here on a solidarity delegation, so solidarity to you. <laughs> Tell me more, like how long have you been here? Where have you been visiting? How many people have you met? Tell us everything. So it's been about 48 hours since I landed in Tel Aviv and since the past 48 hours I've had meetings with the Kogart, with the um, Andrawa people, with the people at the INDC, with different people really in charge of things and I've also been to the Gaza Envelope, I've been to the site of the Nova Music Festival, mm -hmm. I've been to the Kibbutz Peri, I've been uh, to the sort of the car parking lot where they've collected all the vehicles from October 7th. I've been to the Hostage Square and I've also been to meet with the Ben -E Menashe community here in um, Sodorath in Israel. So this is your first time in Israel? Yeah, it's my first time. Like 25 years old, first time in Israel. Who are you kidding? In the middle of a war that too. Right? Only in Israel. You Only have the Iron Israel. Dome and the IDF taking care of you and you can be on a solidarity trip all the way from India. All the way from India and 25 and an only child, <laughs> still feeling very confident. What was your first impression? Just your impression of Israel before visiting Israel and now that you're here and you've met the people and interacted with some of us, like how do you feel? Well, I think my entire impression of Israel was the documentary, the film on Eli Cohen. But it's been a lot of that. It's been about resilience. It's about, you know, you know, it's about making the impossible happen. It's been all of that before coming here and coming here I've seen just more of that you know I wake up here and you know outside the balcony you see the beach it's the Tel Aviv beach and every morning I see people surfing doing yoga and we're in the middle of a war so the spirit to live has not gone away so that is something I see and I think to have that kind of resilience is something else and everybody I met here they've all been on the reserve forces mm -hmm. so they served they continue to serve and they're willing to do anything to protect Israel their mm -hmm. homeland mm -hmm. and I think that kind of loyalty is also something that I see a lot in, in our own army in the Indian army we do and it's endearing to see that in another country in another land to mm -hmm. see that same kind of dedication to see the same kind of love for the motherland and I think it's great and it's been such an experience such a learning experience from whatever I've read about you and all also like understood from your story uh, we see a lot of similarities between the hate for the Jews and the Hindus yeah what do you have to say about that well I think that's the thing right people who go through similar experiences are the ones who can show solidarity they're the only people who can even understand what solidarity means mm -hmm. I think what Hindu students go through on campuses abroad on different you know international campuses where activism is on the high tone is a kind of discrimination right. because we don't fall in that category we don't fall in that sort of intersectional activism bracket and I think that is very unfortunate mm -hmm. I faced that attack myself back in 2020-21 when I became president of the Oxford Union and you know literally everything broke loose there were people after me I had death threats I was asked to resign people were saying Oxford is not ready for a Hindu president yet I was somehow the villain though I was being you know victimized mm -hmm. in such a horrible way mm -hmm. 
and I saw a lot of the same things happening with Jewish students although I think the magnitude and the circumstances are completely different but what we go through as young people on these campuses are extremely hostile behavior uh, coming from the administration from fellow students who just you know they don't even want facts in fact if you put the facts in front of them they'll ask you not to confuse them with facts really yeah really really they're like don't confuse us with facts that's literally what um, they say mm -hmm. and they don't care for facts all they care is to peddle a certain line that makes them look politically correct fancy vogue mm -hmm. and unfortunately that means trampling upon the human rights of you know Jewish students, their families, Hindu students, their families, mm -hmm. the sort of atrocity that multiple generations of Hindus have faced in India, right. multiple generations of Jews have faced all across the world. Mm -hmm. So it completely tramples upon that, it tramples, it completely discounts that and by discounting persecution you normalize it and you perpetuate it for posterity. Right. So by normalizing what happened to the Jews in Israel on the 7th of October 2023 and making it look like it is something they deserved mm -hmm. rather than portray it as what it is it was a terror attack it was an unprovoked terror attack mm -hmm. and it happened you know one of the largest sites I was there today was the Noah music uh, festival and they're all young people they're my age they're people like age. you and I exactly people like you and I and we could have been there really we could you have know, we really. could have just made that plan and really been there and I saw so many so they had this memory memorial of all the people who died and I think about 300 people young people died and I see photos of these young people perhaps if you spoke to half of them they would be sympathetic to you know Palestinian cause so on and so forth yet they're made to face consequences of an ideology they don't choose simply because of who they are mm -hmm. and that is something I saw mm -hmm. that there are young people who don't understand what they believe in or what their ideology is and they're just having a good time they're just young having a good time and probably believe in you know something some ideology mm -hmm. but yet they become victims of the ideology they sympathize and they have to face consequences of these things far before they realize what is right what is wrong mm. and it's so heartbreaking i literally felt revital that it could have been me and you yeah absolutely. it literally could have been me because you know i've studied also in a very explosive place with all kinds of ideas and i have had friends um, when i was 17 18 i was interning abroad and the intern group had people from judea and samaria mm -hmm. they had people from egypt from syria mm -hmm. and you know i have been exposed to those ideas of hamas as a resistance and right. not as a terror group and if i didn't know better if i didn't learn over the past three years mm -hmm. i would have been one of those stupid kids really believing in all of these ideas of resistance and you know mm -hmm. liberation right. whilst it is pure terrorism it is pure terrorism and nothing else and how they have hijacked in fact they've weaponized common citizens i think that breaks my heart more than anything is that the people in gaza and judea and samaria mm -hmm. have actually been weaponized it is the most brilliant yet vicious social engineering ever done mm -hmm. in the history of mankind mm -hmm. where you use common citizens as weapons of as war as human shields as, as human well. shields as weapons of war you build your bunkers you build your armory beneath schools beneath united hospitals. nations schools uh, beneath andrava schools beneath hospitals you hijack these facilities mm -hmm. these civilian facilities mosques hospitals schools mm -hmm. uh, to actually you know create that ecosystem for terrorism mm -hmm. and you further your agenda by utilizing citizens and the common good that we have in society mm -hmm. today if you show the you know image of a hospital exploding any citizen on the face of earth irrespective of religion ideology mm -hmm. even a jew is going to sympathize with the you know people who die at the hospital and they're going to blame the people who bombed the hospital right but the fact that these people have managed to weaponize it somehow to gain sympathy and mm -hmm. escape responsibility of the fact that they are responsible mm -hmm. for the fate that their people are facing today as a result of their weaponization is so heartbreaking mm -hmm. i feel like the children dying in gaza in judea samaria they don't even know what their um, you know what their parents grandparents and the society the kind of injustice that they've done to them the way they've enabled the weaponization mm -hmm. of children and 
and babies because children and babies don't know end of the day but they have been weaponized yeah. and it is so heartbreaking mm-hmm. and for the world to you know unsee the fact that it is pure weaponization to call out the very people who weaponized them like Hamas right they're just enabling them by saying oh it's resistance they're going to weaponize more people the problem exactly. is going to land at your doorstep the Hamas is like a cancer they're not going to stop with just Palestine it's not that for them it it is just reckless senseless massacre if mm-hmm. if you look at what they did with the kids at the Nova music festival i saw so many graphic images of even the videos of what happened to the kids and even kibbutz beri what they did with the elders how they you know shot 80 year olds point blank 96 year olds point blank how they took babies one child one 4 month old baby was shot in the head and um, how they took children and everything and and the way they were mutilated they were not just killed they were mutilated Mm-hmm. that goes to show that you're not dealing with the resistance you're dealing with evil you're de- dealing with pure evil because they didn't stop at killing people they went on to mutilate the body they mm-hmm. went on to you know completely mangle it in a way that it spreads terror across israel jewish people mm-hmm. and you know the larger diaspora mm-hmm. they consider to be their enemies Since you've been here on a delegation, you had the opportunity to witness all of this. Now, a lot of people back in India, especially, have no idea whatsoever that this is happening, and a lot of like mainstream media and legacy media is not covering it. Why do you think that is? It is simple, Ravital. Uh, I think the world it works on a system of incentivization, and currently the incentives lie in glorifying. you know Palestine the you know the cause of Hamas the cause of the Palestinian authorities mm-hmm. and whatever they're putting out and incentives lead to sort of large scale normalization of these things why do you think the algorithms keep pushing the one sided narrative because right. these giants have been incentivized in a particular way to behave a particular way i see so they're all sold it is a complex cabal and uh, unfortunately unsuspecting youth become cannon fodder to this exactly uh, propaganda and, and a lot of them are at an impressionable age so they yeah, just they're, absorb they're very impressionable and they you know they want what's best they they want justice is they're very righteous and you end up with you know young activists who don't know facts mm-hmm. who don't want to know the truth i mean who don't have access to the truth and they have their mind set in a certain way mm-hmm. you know that's how opinion gets built and uh, i think propaganda and all of this has been one of the ways of the warfare if you look at warfare then propaganda is a very essential pillar mm-hmm. and i think in this war at least even if israel is doing well on the military side of it the propaganda war is something that it lost exactly is- along time ago Israel is I mean we talk about it internally because we've been living here we always say that our defense is the best but our PR game is terrible it's not even PR i think propaganda is a an arm of war it, it mm-hmm. is one of the wings of war yeah. no but just like the way like we are portrayed we call it hasbara which is advocacy especially after the war there are a lot more influencers a lot more like people who started doing advocacy and we are like it's too late because the narrative was already built and yeah. the algorithm was already pushing but now a lot more people are doing advocacy see it's going to take years even to kind of like and now with whatever you have and everything everything is on steroids right so you can't even like reconcile with your reality because the minute you start to do the ground beneath you has already shifted oh yeah absolutely so the goal posts are constantly shifting and you know it's i guess it's a never ending problem and um as i think two countries which are very sympathetic and share so much solidarity best we can do is work together and sort of bring our people to justice and ensure that these things don't happen the way they do mm-hmm. uh, but unfortunately they are and uh, how we grapple with it is through solidarity through aligning common interests and making sure that the incentives align with what's right mm-hmm. and not just with where the money is and i really hope that that's the future that we get to live in because i think we are just starting out as you know this is the world we are going to live in Absolutely. the older people who are calling the shots are going to be gone <laughs> no offense but i mean that's we, a, that's a circle of life yeah so. that's a circle of life and we got to live with the reality absolutely and um, i really hope that we get to live in a better world 
We do. And I, I want to say that she, by the way, is in a very tight schedule. I literally like messaged her today <laughs> and today was the day when she had like a free slot and we met and we're filming in her <laughs> hotel room. So I want to say I appreciate your with, time. With chai. With, with chai. With Girnar chai because hello. Hello. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm going to get some chai in my bag. <laughs> but I want to say that thank you for taking out the time. I know it's not an easy day for you because you visited the grounds of the artist series. It was overwhelming. It was overwhelming to say the least. And I have to say that you have a very inspiring story as well. Thank you. And I'm so proud of you. And now that we are friends, yeah. I promised her that when I visit India next, uh, I'll come to Karnataka. To Udupi. Yes. To Udupi. And she's going to take me around and we make more content. Yes. Um, stay tuned for Udupi. <laughs> stay tuned for that. But this is where India Israel uh, solidarity and alliance uh, begins. I mean, this is just the beginning because I know America and Israel are very close because of a long history. But now, with everything that's going on, we definitely see India Israel going on on another level. And uh, we are kind of like the first generation who's doing it. We need your support. So please spread the word, share this video, and uh, do everything she says, please. <laughs> She's the boss. <laughs> Do you have any final words for our audience who's watching this video? My audience is uh, based in India and Indians all around the world. And of course, we have Israelis and Americans, but mm -hmm. most of our audience is from India. So, have... global citizens and yes. also Indians who are also global citizens. My message is just, you know, read more, don't rely on what the mainstream is trying to tell you because increasingly I've seen that what's shown in the media is not the reality at all. In fact, last week I was at a speech in Vladivostok where President Putin spoke for three hours and I was keenly listening to everything he said and the headlines were exact opposite of what he was saying there. So I've seen media manipulation firsthand. I've seen the president of a country say something mm -hmm. and the media write the exact opposite. I see. I've seen it firsthand. Uh, so I kind of you know, it, it's not a conspiracy theory anymore that, you know, you, this media manipulation, this algorithm manipulation, it is the reality we are living in. So please share this among your circles because the algorithm is not going to help us. Please try to educate people around you. If somebody says that, oh no, this is right and this is not wrong, please challenge their views. Because very, I think as Indians, we are very non-confrontational. We think, okay, hame kya hai? We, we know what we know and, you know, maybe he's beyond reproach. But mm -hmm. The way we change opinions is by sh challenging them with facts, challenging them with the reality of what is happening. And that's the only way we can actually bring change in society. Please, so please get on that confrontational foot and <laughs> tell your circles if, if this, I'm sure Israel-Palestine is something that is heavily discussed in social circles, as is Russia, Ukraine, as are other con conflicts. So please put your foot forward and tell them what's right. With that, we come to an end. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.